afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. And I will switch the gear to talk about something not usually talk about in the cancer meeting. Um, it's microbiome. Before my presentation, I want to acknowledge my research team. Uh, this is a new fashion. Uh, last, starting last year, uh, we have a lot of Zoom meetings. And I also want to acknowledge microbiome, our invisible friend who are uh, within us, uh, in us, and doing things for us. And many times we didn't realize it. And for today's presentation, I will tell you why we care about microbiome in cancer research. I will give two samples uh, about uh, how micronutrients could potentially uh, shape the microbiome for cancer therapy. And I will use a breast cancer uh, as uh, one of these uh, uh, samples. And from this picture uh, uh, published in Nature 2012, so we start to know uh, actually we have this invisible friend associated with us, and they are called microbiome. And I would rather uh, clarify the concepts before I go further, because we see from the literature there is a microbiota and the microbiome. Uh, what are the differences? Microbiota usually uh, uh, referred to the connection or community of microorganisms. Uh, it usually uh, includes uh, bacteria, because that's how we got started with this uh, microbiota uh, research. But uh, uh, ongoing study, you heard about more about uh, uh, bacteria or interact with uh, virus, fungi, and the other uh, microbes associated with uh, human body or in some defined environment. We talk about the microbiome, usually we refer to the genes or genomes of uh, microorganisms. Depends on the location, you will see the terms such as uh, gut microbiome, breast microbiome, uh, brain microbiome, indicating uh, many of uh, human uh, organs actually are not sterile. They are associated with uh, uh, microbes. And this is basic uh, um, microbiology 101. Because we talk about a, a microbiome, so we usually clarify it uh, by uh, the uh, location, by the distribution from uh, domain to kingdom. Uh, usually, you see a lot of uh, discussion on FINA level. And for mechanistic study, you want to go deeper, not just to talk about a FINA level, which is relatively high. Uh, for this clarification. You want to go further to understand which species associate or are uh, causing the disease, or even go further about the specific strain of certain uh, uh, bacteria. So then you can do the uh, potential therapeutic study or uh, modification. And you will also uh, know the other clarification for uh, uh, bacteria depends on uh, if it's uh, either a gram negative or gram positive or a uh, lack like, uh, oxygen or hate oxygen so that will help us to clarify uh, what we heard about uh, from the literature or from today's presentation so why suddenly people talk about microbiome in almost every research and the reason is in the past we knew there were uh, bacteria or some microbes associated with us, but because many of these microbes are very difficult to uh, culture and cannot be seen usually, uh, you don't believe what you cannot see. Molecular biology, uh, especially the uh, sequencing, allow us to look at the conservative side of uh, bacteria, uh, consisting as RNA. So that will help us to clarify or know uh, what is not seen, but actually it's already exists uh, uh, in the uh, defined environment. And further, you can do the uh, shotgun sequence and then uh, um, try to uh, combine with other omics method to understand the function of microbes. So because of this uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, molecular biology method and also the omics uh, method for MAC data, 
so able to further develop the field and start to uh, understand uh, microbes. And this is a very uh, interesting question when you think about uh, uh, gut micro, uh, microbes. And it's small creature and how much you could wait. And I usually give these questions to my students, they got all kinds of answers. And it's very hard to believe actually about four pounds, which is two kilograms. And imagine uh, four cans uh, of tomato soup is quite heavy if we want to consider lose weight. But actually, uh, we cannot afford to lose uh, this bacteria, this microbiome in our body, because they're, they're basically equally the weight of human heart. It's very important for us. Uh, why? Because it has its own weight, as I mentioned. It also has its structure. And from literature at the villa level, usually you will see these four um, major uh, groups of bacteria. Uh, they play a very important role physiologically including these three key roles, protective roles, which means it can fight with pathogens, fight with the bad bacteria, with food, nutrition, space. It can also produce antimicrobial effects to kill the bad bacteria. Another role is structural role. It can build up a barrier system to prevent the host from invasion by the bad things. It can also produce IgA and also a uh, trained immune system to respond uh, normal, normally to the outside. One of the uh, uh, striking uh, samples is about asthma, because we heard a lot of asthma cases uh, in the big city, in the city. But you, you seldom heard about uh, asthma uh, in the uh, rural area, in the farm. Because uh, for the kids, when uh, they reach uh, seven uh, year old, they're able, before they reach this uh, adulthood uh, or a uh, uh, matured immune system time, they were exposed, uh, exposed to a lot of uh, bacterial, fungi, uh, um, virus in the rural area. So therefore, they build up a more matured immune system. So that's the uh, benefit of uh, microbes. Another important function is metabolic functions. It provides short-chain fatty acids uh, from uh, fermentation. It also provides a vitamin uh, uh, to the body. And we also know on a daily basis, our everyday energy, actually, there is 11 to 14 percent uh, from fermentation. And how could we know this? Because if you put the animals in a totally sterile environment, animal will eat more because they lost uh, one of the important energy resource from bacterial fermentation. So therefore, we need appreciate the function of a uh, microbiome. And when we look at the disease progression, we not just look at the environment, host effects, uh, a change of lifestyle. We also want to understand what happens uh, in the uh, intestinal uh, microbiome, which usually uh, we accept it contributes to the uh, development of uh, intestinal cancer, like colon cancer, GI cancer. But actually, it also has the distant roles, which means it will uh, move these metabolites from bacteria. It will induce inflammatory cytokines and also bacterial products such as LPS for the genes to the other sides of the human organs. So these organs include breast and heart, liver, brain, and all these kind of uh, uh, tissues, actually they are connected. So you really don't need a bacterial translocates to the site. You only need some bacterial products to play the role. So the system is very comprehensive and people start to realize the breast is not sterile and there is a breast microbiome associated with the healthy of uh, uh, breast. And here is the uh, recent literature uh, I cited here. So you will see uh, during the uh, progression of breast diseases, uh, there is a, a clear sign of some uh, bacteria listed here increased and some of these uh, beneficial bacteria uh, reduce the abundancy uh, in the location. 
Another interesting uh, study uh, you will see from the literature uh, published in 2018 is talking about how Delta reboots the beneficial bacteria. And this study uh, trying to use the um, comparison of uh, Western Delta to the Mediterranean uh, Delta, usually considered relatively healthy. And interestingly, they say uh, because of the healthy uh, uh, Delta, you will see the nectar bacilli enhanced in the site of a breast. And another interesting thing is uh, for women who uh, uh, deliver baby, they will uh, secrete uh, milk. And in the milk, you will see a huge uh, increase of bacterial product called butyrate in the breast. And you are wondering, so where this uh, butyrate uh, uh, came from? It was came from a gut or came from the local breast bacteria. Now to be interesting, uh, uh, not just about the uh, local microbiome uh, in the breast and also the crosstalk between the uh, gut and the breast. Because of that, we start to look at the potential uh, microbiome, not just uh, uh, regulated by uh, uh, big nutrients and also uh, regulated by micronutrients. So the micronutrients actually are small amounts of elements such as uh, vitamins, um, important for the body and also for, uh, uh, for the um, development of certain diseases. And we have done uh, a lot of work on vitamin D and also its regulation uh, 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 um, receptor, vitamin D receptor uh, in uh, human diseases. And here's what we uh, uh, learned from the literature and from what we uh, published in the recent years. I will not go uh, further to the details on how vitamin D regulates the uh, uh, microbiome uh, in this talk, uh, but I want to give you the uh, conclusion uh, based on our recent study uh, as a, a host effect vitamin D gene actually is able to determine the uh, microbiome in human. And because of that, it will play uh, a role, not just uh, uh, to regulate intestinal healthy, it will also contribute to the other chronic diseases, uh, such as obesity and cancer. And here for today's talk, I will talk about uh, uh, relatively new things, uh, uh, microbiome called Q. Uh, we simplified it as Q. Why Q is important? Because Q is also only synthesized by bacteria. And um, many cells uh, require Q from food, such as uh, milk, yogurt, and tomato, or from bacteria. And it's considered as a, a non-life vit vitamin uh, based on the uh, um, PNAS paper. It also a very critical to control a molecular biology process called the tRNA modification. Why this is important? Because tRNA is a transfer RNA, which will uh, affect the uh, uh, fidelity and the efficacy of translation from RNA to proteins. And as I mentioned, because we have trillions of bacteria in the body and they are so heavy, like four pounds, and they're also uh, uh, it's, uh, very diverse. So the challenge for the field is usually to identify what is good, what is bad, and what they are doing. And we try to uh, understand the gap uh, in the field on the uh, gut microbiome, breast microbiome, and tRNA single learning in cancer. This is a nearly unexplored field. So what we did actually is very uh, uh, basic. So we are trying to do is to um, uh, have this uh, Q uh, denoted uh, in the system because we know when uh, Q is trying to incorporate it to the tRNA, here's a uh, code uh, uh, Qs in uh, tRNA, and you can see uh, it relies on an uh, important enzyme called QTRT1. And in the system, if we lost the QTRT1, basically the whole Q incorporation into the tRNA uh, will not work. 
So then we use the knockout of the QTRP uh, um, in the breast cells, uh, breast cancer cells. Uh, we have data published uh, uh, last year. We delete uh, uh, this um, enzyme from two um, breast cancer cells. So from here, we uh, show this data. Now basically, this is the MCF7 breast cancer. Uh, these breast cancer uh, cells injecting the noodle mice will uh, induce the uh, big tumors. But if you delete QTRT1, you see the significant reduction of tumor size and also tumor uh, volume uh, weight. So that indicates the breast cancer cells uh, take advantage of Q and for this own uh, proliferation growth. If you're able to uh, break uh, this uh, QTRT uh, pathway, you're able to break uh, the block, the growth of the epithelial, uh, the uh, breast cancer cell uh, growth. And the further, because we have interest in what happened in these uh, um, new mice, we look at the uh, uh, bacterial uh, distribution. So we see some cone bacteria, uh, as I listed here, they are important for breast uh, cancer uh, um, healthy. So they are remarkably changed, uh, as you can see here, uh, by doing the 16S RNA, because you see the rainbow color, uh, different uh, colors indicate a, a different uh, bacterial profile. So we did the analyze, we see the clear spread uh, of this uh, um, distribution bacteria. Uh, this is the knockout and this is the Y type uh, bearing with tumor. And because of that, uh, we see the dysbiosis, which means the um, change of uh, uh, bacteria in the mice change the uh, associated with the uh, tumor size. Another thing is uh, we actually able to identify uh, bacteria uh, in the tumors, inside the tumors. So what we did actually is a, a molecular method called fish staining. So we try to use the uh, molecular probes uh, with uh, bacteria. So you can see here, uh, this is the uh, uh, breast uh, cancer cells without deletion. You see a very strong staining of uh, um, uh, microbe uh, probes indicating the existence of uh, uh, bacteria in the tumor. And if you delete this uh, QTRT, which means you block the, uh, the Q pathway, so you see the uh, reduction uh, of bacteria. So that indicates you're not just to have this uh, uh, microbiome uh, in the intestine, you also have this uh, microbiome able to move to the tumors and also uh, um, enhance uh, in the tumor. We have done a lot of uh, molecular uh, studies uh, uh, in this publication, try to understand uh, why and how uh, this uh, bacteria originally uh, could exist uh, in the GI. So how could it translocation to the uh, breast? And also on the breast, the local breast microbiome uh, enhanced during the uh, uh, tumor development. And that may related with the uh, inflammation on site and also related to the uh, um, some of these uh, uh, genes like e had herring, beta catenin, uh, which are known for the uh, cell proliferation and the cell cell attention. And we also see the um, Claudin 5, which is important for a berry system, uh, uh, which uh, broke down uh, in the uh, breast uh, cancer uh, tumor development. And what we're trying to show here actually is uh, a, a very pioneer uh, begin, uh, beginning uh, study on the crosstalk between the gut tumor microbiome uh, in breast cancer development. The reason we try to do that because we believe um, this uh, microbiome is not just to stay in the local, it could communicate with the breast and the breast tumor, uh, uh, tumor uh, development process also involved the uh, bacteria contribute to this process. 
Why this is important? Because if you understand the process, actually will help us to uh, develop a more personalized, accurate therapy uh, for the patient. Because uh, last uh, month, you may heard of uh, two uh, science paper published side by side on uh, fecal microbial transplantation uh, in uh, um, immunotherapy uh, patients. Because they are trying to uh, 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 help the patient without response to immunotherapy by transfer uh, the beneficial bacteria to the patient, so, so then uh, make the patient more responsible to the therapy. If you are able to understand what's going on. Uh, on, on our invisible friends, you are able to uh, treat the uh, uh, disease uh, better. So here's another uh, um, uh, very nice uh, review paper, because uh, we know, all know the uh, um, hallmarks of cancers. And this uh, review paper tried to link a microbiome on each step of the hallmark of cancers. So you can see how this uh, uh, individual bacterial or bacterial products contribute to the resistant cell deaths, uh, how to uh, escape the uh, um, um, immune uh, uh, response um, system, uh, and eventually it gets the um, continuous growing and to activate the proliferation system. So each step for this uh, hallmark of cancers, uh, microbiome actually contribute to the process. A very interesting study and very uh, helpful for, for you if you have interest uh, to understand the, this new field. And take home message. Um, and I try to uh, uh, convince you the importance of microbiome uh, in the uh, um, cancer development. And this uh, uh, interaction not just uh, involved uh, GI microbiome and also uh, uh, involved the unsuit uh, uh, breast uh, microbiome. And hopefully uh, you can uh, share your, your knowledge with your uh, friends and colleagues to uh, live a healthy lifestyle with a healthy microbiome. And you can use uh, 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 micronutrition and good foods, uh, probiotics, uh, try to uh, make the microbiome healthy. And we have multiple things going on in the lab trying to understand the uh, uh, microbiome in different diseases. If you are interested in this topic, feel free to contact me uh, uh, from my email. Um, and we have uh, books on uh, how to analyze microbiome data and also the progress of uh, uh, microbiome in uh, different diseases. Another one uh, uh, very uh, is ongoing, is already uh, uh, posted online. It's about the uh, inflammation infection and microbiome in cancers. So I organized this uh, 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 big book, try to discuss the microbiome in different organs. So you are welcome to uh, take a look and discuss with me if you're interested in these uh, topics. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Now I can take questions.